I will first read for you uh, a poem by Lenore Kandel, who is a beat poet, my all-time favorite. Then I'll read a short piece about what happened to our family. And then I'll read an even shorter piece about 9-11-2012, which was last year, and I wrote some words then. This is called Room for Tyrants. It seems I must love even you. Easier loving the pretty things, the children, the morning glories. Easier, as compassion grows, to love the stranger. Easier even to realize with compassion the pain and terror implicit in those who treat the world around them with such brutality, such hate. But oh, I am no Christ. Blessing the executioners, I'm no Buddha, no saint, nor have I that incandescent strength or faith illuminated. Yet even so, you are a sentient being breathing this air, even as I am a sentient being breathing this air, seeking my own enlightenment, I must seek yours. If I had love enough, if I had faith enough, perhaps I could transcend your path. And after even that, forgive me then, I cannot love you yet. When I climbed on the treadmill that morning, I was wondering, as usual, if I really wanted to do this again every morning. Dropping off my kids at school, I routinely went to the gym. I had gotten to know people there, so it also became somewhat of a social event time. I never really looked forward to it though. Austin, Texas is health conscious, as am I, or trying. Sometimes I got to talk to my neighboring exercisers, sometimes we were just silent and sometimes we were watching TV depending on what anyone had switched on. This morning we were watching the news. I was not really paying attention and when I looked up at, at a point later I saw something that looked like a horror futuristic movie. It reminded me of the movie Independence Day, although the pictures seem different. A plane flying in the World Trade Center? Hmm. I did not recall that movie. Suddenly everyone in the gym, some 20 women, fell silent. And everyone was watching now. Then someone said, this is not a movie. This is real. There's no way to comprehend that fast. The TV screen a few feet away, a plane flying into the World Trade Center. Just a consideration of this being true was flabbergasting. Most people now got off the treadmills and began gathering around the TV watching awestruck. I now was dead quiet in the gym and as the second plane flew into the other building and we would hear each other's gasps and shrieks while staring at the TV. Almost everyone here knew someone in New York. Many of us had lived there or had family there. Slowly fear began to set in. What did this mean? What are the cons consequences? Who else will be targeted? We were living in bush country. Soon everyone began scrambling for a phone. When you witness trauma, you're traumatized yourself in a physiological term. This means that your body goes through changes and charges, and if you cannot fight or flee, you will freeze. The charge that just occurred is now frozen in your body, and unless you work on deactivating the charge, you will be there forever. My mind went to my kids, one in middle school, 13, and one in elementary school, 10 years old. Everyone felt that we should pick up our kids now from school. We wanted to be with them. Some argued it was better to leave them as normal as possible. While this confusion was going on and the pictures were repeating over and over and over, we started to see more and more of the records and the cornets and some people were now yelling, my cousin works there and my husband had a meeting there this morning and so on and so on. During this panic and confusion about what, about what to do first, we started to get phone calls from the elementary school and the middle school and then we heard there was a bomb square. Huh? A bomb square? The kids were all evacuated, and we could pick them up in 30 minutes. 
it got even more confusing and scary, more to take in. Absolute horror set in. Most of us scrambled to our cars. We didn't understand what the bomb square meant. It is then I found the message from my daughter. Mommy, please come and pick me up. The traffic around the school was chaos. People had dropped their cars left, right, and center and had just run into the school. I found my daughter, afraid and confused. I turned out the teachers had not told them anything, but needless to say, they knew something was seriously wrong. They saw TV screens in other classrooms where there were no kids. She told she saw a teacher crying. She saw a group of teachers huddling together, whispering. Why they decided not to explain anything at all to them, I will never know. I found some of her friends, and we started calling the moms that were were not there yet, and I said to the kids, All of you who do not have a parent, come with me and come and sit with me in the van. Again, teachers were nowhere to be found. I suspect they were also dealing with their own things. In the end, I stayed in the car with with one other only girl and my daughter, and I decided to tell them what happened. For days, my daughter believed it had to be an accident. It must have been an accident. She could not wrap her head around it. When my son came home, wide-eyed and fearful, he told me he had seen everything. The teachers had been very open, and it seemed okay, even though nobody could grasp then what the far-fetching consequences would be. I had dinner with my daughter last night, now adult and in college, when they had talked about 9-11 extensively in freshman year. Two things stood out. Her classmates were amazed how much of confusion and chaos and fear it created in other parts of the country. It did not just happen in New York. Additionally, the whole country initially was thrown into fear, a national fear, something unheard of until then. And the last piece is my words I wrote. Even you I love, are only if you could only see it, my world and yours would be another world. Sidewalks would not be dangerous. Wait walking next to you, a joy. Your love is where? I see it. Imagine it. So just for now, even you, I love.